Three places up for grabs then after the Leicester Tigers secured their Premiership playoff place last weekend. This time, it's not in the Sharks' hands. We just need to win, whatever it takes. We know this squad should be good enough and to be in the top four. We go into the last game of the season against Northampton with everything to play for. And as long as it's mathematically possible to be in the top four, we'll keep fighting to the last minute of the last game. Metal no bones about it, you know, we're we know what challenge we've got you know, ahead of us. we just got to put in a performance, really. Everything we possibly can to win. It's a matter of belief, and I think right then and there was where Sales Sharks started to believe that we can do it, that we can make the top four. So an 87th minute try against Harlequins gave Sale Sharks the bonus point they desperately needed to keep their playoff dream alive. But a midweek point deducted for a breach of premiership rules has made the task even harder. Still though, Saturday will be a nail biter. You interviewed me at the go-karting and you said to me I looked pretty down and uh, I'd had the news that the that, that, uh, ward had played and registered uh, that just before that interview. If we don't make the top four, it's not because of that one point in many ways, it's because of these opportunities through the seasons that we've all made mistakes and, uh, you know, whether we've missed a tackle or whether we didn't take a bonus point win, whether someone's missed a kick, uh, you know, collectively uh, we take responsibility. But um, I can tell you, know, you know, ultimately I take responsibility for the, for the point being deducted, I'm the director of rugby, and uh, some harsh lessons to be learnt from this for all involved. It's going to be a massive day for us. But you know, we're all keen to play, get our name on the team sheet and, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of lads leaving and stuff. Um, so, you know, we, it's the last time I'm going to play alongside some of these lads and, um, you know, we want to go out with a, with a massive win and um, I'm, I can't wait for it. It's wide open, so, you know, it puts the pressure on the players, uh, puts pressure on every team really to go out and perform and uh, really test them, whoever can last under that pressure. With the ones who, uh, who go on. For us, we've got to get five points. You know, for us, now listening to the radio, what's happening, we've got to get five points. If we don't, then the results are irrelevant. So for us, it's quite easy. We can focus. Our job in hand is to win the game, get four tries, and that's all we need to concentrate on. Other teams, obviously, I mean, maybe they might be thinking, right, well, let's see who, what they've got, what points do we need to get. You know, their, their job might be a bit, a bit of maths in there, but for us, it's, it's simple. Have you been impressed by Northampton since they've been back in the Premiership? Oh, massively, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, they're a very good side. Um, they play good rugby. Um, you know, we, we've been watching them all week on the video. We know how they play, and it's, they play attractive rugby. You know, they've got some real good players there, and they've got a good balance between the backs and forwards. It's going to be a tough, you know, it's going to be a tough game. Um, you make no bones about it. You know, we, we know what challenge we've got, you know, ahead of us. They're going to come down here and prove a point to, to you know, to the to the Sale fans and stuff like that, but. You know, it's, it's just going to be an awesome game, and uh, can't wait to get stuck in. At home, they've been very strong, and away they seem to have, have dipped. I'm not too sure why. Um, you know, it's, uh, I played with Jim Mallander as a coach before, and you know, I can't see it being anything down to him. I think it's just maybe once you lose a few games, those nerves kick in, and I'm not too sure why. But if you look at the team, they've got a fantastic team, and when they do perform well, and you don't get your tackles, they they destroy teams like they did to us when we went to play them at their place. Playing away from home last day of the season is never an easy task, so. I think we've, we've got a, fight, a real fighting chance, especially in front of our home crowd. We just need to put in a performance like we did on Friday, build on that. And I think it's, you know, we're, we're all pretty positive about the situation. We're just looking to, looking to do whatever we can to ensure we give it the best possible chance. You know, you'd be a madman possibly to put a lot of money on us at the moment to be in our top four, but 
as I say, stranger things have happened. But the bottom line is, well, we really need to finish the season well, finish with a big performance and a big win. Um, Northampton are coming here, as you said, to finish seventh and qualify Heineken Cup. They've had a tremendous first season back in the league. They've, they had a season in national two, able to regroup, able to refocus, build a squad. And, uh, you know, often that can build resolve and make a squad better, make a club better. And I think they had an opportunity to have a good clear out there um, when they went to Division One. And they've come back and they've managed the squad well and they're in a great position. We've just got to put in a performance, really, everything we possibly can to win. Uh, like I say, the crowd are absolutely great against, against Harlequins and more of the same, just spurs the players on. So, yeah, I think, I, think, I think it could be positive. You know, I know what it's like to pay for a ticket and go and watch Sale. Um, so, yeah, I'm totally up for it. I, the, believe me, the players, are. Uh, we've been training well all week. Um, you know, I've said it before, gonna, we're going to say farewell to a lot of decent players and a lot of good friends, and uh, we just need to generate that. Well, it's not going to be in question. It's going to be an awesome day on Saturday. Um, so I just can't wait to get stuck in. So this is the one you've all been waiting for. Broughton Park and Old Winian still stand top of the Grubber Challenge table with two kicks apiece. This week, though, it's time for a team with a lot more money, a reputation to maintain, and a hell of a lot more time to practice. You might have heard of them from Stockport. It's Sail Sharks. <laughs> Dave Ward Hooker. No, it's in his specialist. Hey. Oh, Charlie, I'll check you by half. Meow. Oh. Oh. Let's go field block. That's a beauty. Oh, oh. 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 We're going to go out. Yeah, Ripping. 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 Oh, David, take back row. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, no, I'm good. John Cox, block. John Cox, block. Will Perry's a cross dresser. <laughs> Ariel Lippel, Mitchell. Under, under, Ipa, Ipa. Neil Briggs, sub. <laughs> Jason, jump on, jump on, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Wallace has been. <laughs> Absolutely shocking sale sharks. So the trophy will be awarded to Old Winnings and Broughton Park. This week, though, it's finally been announced. After months of discussions between fans, players and the media on who's in and who's not, Ian McGeekin lifted the lid on who's to pack their bags for the British and Irish Lions trip to South Africa. Just one shark in the 37-man squad, the machine that is Andrew Sheridan. You didn't even watch the call-up. What were you doing at the time? I was, no, I was in, the, in the gym with Avion. Um, just doing a bit of uh, neck rehab sort of work, you know, weights work and stuff. But no, it was, I, you know, it was just because there was a big crowd of people in the room. And you don't like that, do you? No, not not really. Obviously, I was, you know, I was, we hadn't got a clue who would be selected, so it was just. But I knew I'd find out sooner or later. So I really enjoyed it four years ago when I was in New Zealand. I know it wasn't a particularly successful tour, um, but to to go to be selected again is obviously, you know, massive really. But it's great. Very, very pleased for Andrew. Uh, he deserves it and he's got better as the season has gone on. But very disappointed for Mark Quaid and Dwayne Peel in particularly. Uh, you know, Quaid is getting better and better and he's probably in the form of his life. Lee Halfpenny is probably the young guy who's got the nod in front of him. He's a very good young player. But, um, you know, Mark um, can count himself very unlucky, I'm sure. Uh, and also Dwayne. I'm sure if Dwayne had gone on the trip that uh, he would have gone on to win the test spot. This was no idea whatsoever you kept in the dark. Yeah, they, they, they've kept it very uh, much uh, in-house, I guess, just between all the, the people selecting it. So, yeah, it's just, 
yeah, it's just great, great that, it's, that I've been selected. And you've got it all to do, of course. 1974, 1997, the last two wins against South Africa. Big, big challenge ahead of you. Yeah, well, everyone knows how good South Africa are, how physical they are. They're obviously world champions, and um, it's always talked about, but it's true. You've got four separate nations, players from four separate nations coming together, and it's, it's a case of getting everyone working well together as soon as you possibly can. It's obviously going to be a very uh, tough challenge to take, take on South Africa. Part one done and dusted then, but stay with us because after the break I try and give one of the Sharks a run for their money on the golf course. And when I say try, I really mean try. Ben Cohen's uncle George played which position in the 1966 World Cup final against Germany at Wembley? Was it A, centre midfield, B, left wing or C, right fullback? So before the break, we asked you which position did Ben Cohen's uncle George play in the 1966 World Cup final against Germany? The answer was C, right fullback. Our guest this week is a real success story of the Sale Sharks Academy. Born in Blackpool and capped by England, he scored some memorable tries for both club and country, but on his day off, he took me for a little walk in what he calls his back garden. Richard Eric Peter Oglesworth, Scrum Half, Handicap 14. William James Perry, Channel M, weapon of mass destruction, sand iron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to keep that in. That's amazing. That's what, they all do that, don't they? War, <laughs> war <shot. laughs> oh my ground. God, how long are we going to be here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. I'll just keep quiet and let your golf do the talking. It's saving for it for the night. Oh, okay, yeah. Seriously, what, what's all this about? Everyone's saying you're a bit of a star golfer. Not bad from your first shot, I'll give you that one. But you do have a golf course on your back garden. I have a balcony. Oh, no. Well, I've only played it about five times because it's... Five times? <laughs> yeah. I've only, I've only, I have. I've not been home that much. Much to my mum's annoyance, but... Um, you, you obviously you grew up as a kid playing golf, yeah? No, I didn't, I didn't play that much. I've only been playing the last sort of three years. Uh, Stan got me into it and I enjoy beating him. I think the reason they think I'm a star golfer is because they think I'm a bit of a bandit because I always take the money. When there's ever money involved, oh, yeah, I always win. You put money on it, do you? Yeah. Oh, not much because Stan can't afford much these days, but <laughs> I always, I do feel bad taking it off him. But It's, it's your parents. How long has it been open for? Uh, it was open last July. I uh, got a few of the boys down, Charlie Equates, and a few of the boys to open it for us at the grand opening. We were a dairy farm before that and my dad was obviously looking to diversify into something else and he was quite interested in golf and it was a long time in the planning but uh, here now and next nine open in July. <coughs> Who is the best golfer in the squad? Much do I know it's Coxie by, by quite a distance. He plays off six. He is the most serious and competitive man you'll ever meet. The worst? Well, Stan, because he's meant to actually be all right. Golf. He, he claims he's off 12, which is ridiculous because he played to about 24 yesterday. So. Is that all right for you? That looks great, mate, yeah. Oh, I have to speak to my dad about these. a bit bobbly. It was straight in, apart from that. Oh my god, you having a giggle. You you were on the green, now you're off the green. Is this a setup? Or, oh yeah, I'm really rubbish and then I hope this 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 is a setup and there's better golf to come. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Honestly never seen anything like it. What was that, bogey or I think yours had bogey in it, but a bit slower than your beamer this wiggy. There's a, a vicious rumour going around that you're the, the loudest out of a squad of 40 players. I don't. The cocky is the loudest. Who's, who said this? No, is it true? Rumours come from somewhere. You are, the way scrum halves have to be, don't they? Bit of a, yeah, bit of a cocky. Generally quite loud, but I think all the boys would say that I'm extremely respectful and, and just thought really nice. Well, you, I've heard nice you, wake, you wake everyone up on a wave trip because you're so loud in the hotel room. No, so I don't know what well, you're doing. The only, well, a few years ago when we played Birits in the quarterfinal of the... Uh, the Heineken Cup, I did fear for my life when uh, every afternoon there was a few of us who gathered in one room because we, we weren't in for uh, sleeping in, in afternoons and making a bit of a racket and apparently my voice was heard above all others and uh, I woke a certain Mr Shabal and, and Mr White and He'd back Mr Sheridan. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, no, I'd smash the bass yeah, every day of the week. has <laughs> got that on <laughs> yeah. You need to pick your game up here, mate. 
Wiggy, before you take the shot, we've talked about you being the, the loudest of, of the bunch there, but I want to know um, how it came into rugby for you and, and to sail, because you went to Kirkham School, didn't you, which isn't far from where we are yeah, now. Yeah, about 10 minutes from here. And Sanderson was, brothers were there? Yeah, I was always um, into my football and hated rugby until I was sort of 14, 15, and as it is, you get into these things. And you played what, as an England under-17s game or something? In uh, yeah, I got invited to sort of England under-17s camp, and that was the first time I thought, oh, I might be able to do something with this, and, mm -hmm. and sort of put all my energies into to doing it. Because you are... I mean, compared to the others, smallish, aren't you? I'm by no means the smallest man. We've who's got, smaller than you, then? We've got Oriel Ripple, who's... He's stacked, though, isn't he? Yeah, but he's about 60, and he's 5 foot 2, and... OK, he's Spanish. 11 stuff, and he's Spanish, yeah, so he's tiny. Tiny. Looks like he's got the distance. Sure what, are you, what are you using, anyway? What could A be five. Using? A five. We're 150 yards away using a 5 iron. Yeah. You, and you've just called me small. Oh my god. <laughs> His pivot has gone further than the ball. It's straight. Right, you've gone and pick up your seven pieces of turf that you've just nailed. It's straight. You're ruining my inheritance here. <laughs> I think you're further away from the green than you are now. What have you made of it with, personally with the rotation with Dwayne Peel and things? Because the press have had a lot to say about that. Has it, has it been annoying for you at all? Yeah, I think it has. Both of us, it's been frustrating at times, but I think the press have made more of it than, than needs to be made. I don't think you... I think the fact that neither of us got selected in international squads in the first place, Dwayne obviously then got called up and, and would have started for Wales had he, had he not unfortunately got injured. But I think that was the reason there was so much more made of it. I think if we'd have both played well enough to, to be in the international sides, then nothing would have been made of it. I was... I'm quite happy with the amount of rugby I played. I would have obviously liked a few more games in a row, but um, he's a quality player and and that's just the way it's worked out. And you've played all over the place, haven't you? Because you played at fly half quite a bit last year when you when you were needed and so on. You played, you know, you come on, you played on the wing once as well. Yeah, which tell me about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go on, tell me no, about. I played on the wing a few times. But tell me about the one time the, you remember one, the last on the wing. time I played on the wing. Philippe's great idea of playing me on the wing when we had no one. A extreme shortage of backs and uh, the ball hit up made at Saracens and I tried to dive on it and then uh, promptly need the ball back over the try line for Saracens to score the bonus point try I think a bit like my tee shot nowhere near as bad as that <laughs> get potting oh, that goes in that big move oh my god that it's off the green you again. The bobble. The bobble. Well, the bobble would slow it down, so it was a good job there was a bobble. Wiggy, superstitions. You possibly have one of the strangest superstitions I've ever heard of. Just tell everyone at home what it is first. I have a superstition that I have to put my left sock, right sock, left boot, right boot on in that order. Otherwise, it all has to come off and start again, and uh, I can't play until that's until that's done. I'm pretty. I'm pretty zoned in on it now, it's pretty automatic, but if I realise it's, it's not happened, I have to quickly whip it off without anyone noticing. They, they, do the lads have weird superstitions as well? No, Lionel likes to be naked until about 20 minutes before kick-off, but <laughs> it's not, I don't know if it's a superstition, but it's not a fantastic sight. Just in the dressing room? <laughs> you just during the chat. generally wandering around dressing rooms and um, you don't want to be looking over in the, the props corner because it's never a pretty sight, especially, well, with Lionel with kick-off, not, not the best. Oh, it's got a bit of bend on it. I might be in a, I think there's a bunker down there. You were the only person I've ever seen you to drive on the par three. Is this your grand's house on the right? This is my grand's house. In no way is that a danger. I'm not going to try and hit you. If grand. you can hit my grand's house, you can have it. <laughs> you, you said you've already got plans for her. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, what's off camera stays off camera. Come on. <laughs> oh, he's gone for it as well. <laughs> I don't think you meant to. Oh no. Oh, you hit your grand's house. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, right, this best not go close. Didn't get the backspin. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the moments in your career have already been unbelievable. The one that obviously stands out has got to be England against France. That, yeah, that day, yeah. and, you, and we talked to you before and you talk it down and so on, but what on earth was going through your mind when you scored that? Oh, I can remember it. It's I'm able to screaming. Yeah. And, 
that is it. There was no thought of what I'd just done and my first start managed to, to get a try or anything like that. It was just, well, probably feel joy of just screaming my head off and some horrendous photos of me the next day. <laughs> pulling a pulling a horrible gurn as I threw the ball into the <laughs> crowd. But um, and what's the deal with England then? Because obviously you've had a change of coach since that time, and you know you've yeah, not been playing as much as you worked out well for me, haven't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, that's got to be you know in your mind some point to get back there. You're 25. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's a massive goal of mine to try and play for England again. And, do you feel Obviously, a bit unlucky not to have done having scored um, in, in Paris? And no, so I don't think that the trying that's got anything to do with it. I think you, you've got to try and play well. And I feel at times this year I, have, I probably played better than I did when I, when I got capped. But there's, there's a lot of good scrum halves out there. And, and it's their opinion that, that they're better than me. And, and I have to take that and, and work as hard as I can to, to try and uh, get some more caps. And if it never happens, then it won't be too lucky. Right? Big tee shot this, Wiggy. Oh, yeah. Last hole. For it! Got him. Got He's him. running. He's running. Got him. He actually broke into a run. <laughs> Wiggy, sum up for the season for me now. Well, one word, inconsistent. Yeah? Yeah. We've got two halves of a season. Yeah, well, not even that. We've been we were great against Clermont and then we needed the win at home against Munster and just and didn't manage to get that. And I think that would have been a big turning point for us because we might have not needed to win going to Munster. We might have just, we would have already been qualified so that was obviously a big disappointment and and other games where we've missed out on bonus points or or last minute wins and it all could have been very different we could have had a dense destiny in our own hands but we've not so we'll see what happens this weekend the results went bad for two two reasons really the, the, the six nations was on and we lost a lot of good players and then a lot of other good players got injured and, um, as good as the squad is is that you are going to struggle if you've got so many injuries and and top players missing, and it was unfortunate that they both happened at the same time. And having had a taste of Twickenham, obviously 2005, 2006, I guess that taste is going to want you yeah, to go back there right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely, because um, I've got my shirt framed in my, in my house back, and you, you look at it, and all you remember is how good that day was. I don't think ever... That day, people made sort of said, oh, did that make us complacent? Because I think that had the opposite effect on anyone I've talked to is that we're more determined to get back because we know how good it was to, to win it. So if we can ever win it again, we'll, we'll know how, how it's going to feel. Now this is intense. I mean, forget Saturday. I couldn't care less about that. I'm more interested in this. This I've never seen a match like this. You've got the longest putt here. I think you're going to go first. Right, right? get the flag out there. A few problems recently. Oh! That's not far away. But... Oh, my God. Oh, where's the turn? <laughs> there's a turn! Oh, no. Oh! I hope everyone didn't think it was that close. Anyway, Wiggy. Yeah. Super that, course. Mate. Cheers, buddy. Best of luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I hope we see you at Twickenham. Yeah, that'd be nice. So that's it for Talking Sharks this time, but let's hope the rugby gods are looking over Edgeley Park on Saturday afternoon and the top four dream continues. Next week I'm joined by another Sharks legend where I get a much needed kicking lesson from the one and only Charlie Hodgson. We'll see you then. I always maintain that I'll always I'll only listen to people who, who mean who mean something to me and listen to criticism from coaches uh, and from players around, but but not from not from somebody who sat in the crowd.